I put a community post out on my channel a couple of weeks ago asking if you guys had any questions that you'd like me to answer and you guys sure came through. So in today's video, I've got some cracking viewer questions that I'm going to hopefully do justice to and answer. Just remember that I'm no botanist and just a plant enthusiast with a few years experience looking after some house plants. So please be kind if you disagree with some of my answers. Also, apologies if I butcher the pronunciation of any of your names. So first up, Suze Co asks, with autumn around the corner, how do we care for our indoor plants during winter? Do we water less? Which plants go dormant, etc.? It's a great question, though I do find it slightly depressing that we're already talking about autumn. Where did the summer go? We'll be planning Christmas soon. Honestly, there's not much we need to do with our plants during autumn and winter. They pretty much stop growing, so we do need to water less. I usually water my non-succulent plants once every two or three weeks and my succulents probably once a month, if not longer. It's even more important to check the soil of the plant before watering when the plant is not growing because you'll probably find it does not need water more often than not. It's also important to stop fertilizing in autumn until the beginning of spring and prune away anything that becomes damaged or diseased. Next up, Jay says, any budget growing ideas will be awesome. Burlap moss bowls, DIY soil mix type perhaps to save on buying from Amazon unless total necessary. My favorite hat was using a wooden dowel to check for moisture rather than a fancy gadget. I like this question because it has given me a couple of ideas for some future videos. Now, I've not made a moss pole using burlap before, but I've seen it done and it does look like a great idea. I'll try and put a, a video together on this topic in the future. I never buy premium soil mixes, I always make my own. There's nothing fancy, just some regular garden compost that I buy in those 10 litre bags and some perlite mixed in for drainage. That's all you need really and it's pretty affordable when my plants seem to like this simple mix. For other budget ideas, then watch this space. Blind Monk 93 asks, saw some small plants in the co-op today. What should one do first when buying a cheap shop bought plant to give it a healthy start and boost its chances of survival and growth? So buying small plants and growing them out is a fantastic way to grow your plant collection without breaking the bank. It's something I always do. I wouldn't do too much to the plant, to be honest. Leave it in the pot it came in and place it somewhere in your home and leave it there. Don't fertilize for the first few months because the shop was probably on top of that. And you don't want to risk over fertilizing your new plant. Keep on top of watering and only change the pot when the plant outgrows it. Only up pot one or two sizes up at a time to avoid the risk of overwatering issues for your plant. Golden asks, I have a couple of healthy plants that are a little bald at the soil level. So in an effort to fill them out by creating some growth points at the soil level, I've tried propagating in two ways and they've both failed. How can I plant rooted cuttings back into the soil of the mother plant and make it grow successfully with the mother plant? I know that we are supposed to keep newly rooted cuttings moist for a couple of weeks after transitioning to soil, but wouldn't that be too much water for the other plant? Nice question and honestly, if you're taking cuttings to then plant back into the soil of the mother plant, I would find another way to root the cuttings because like you say, water rooted cuttings should be kept moist for the first few weeks to help them acclimatize to the soil and it's probably too wet for the mother plant. So you don't always have to root cuttings in water. I've had lots of success with propagations in soil, which is really easy, or you can set up a perlite propagation box. Abner has an interesting question and asks, can you give us a few tips on how we can upgrade or look fancy our plants that are common or not that pricey. Now personally, I wouldn't worry about plants looking fancy or expensive. I think all plants are equal in my opinion, regardless of price. Plants do always look best when they look full and vibrant with tons of foliage in the pot. So I'll be looking to propagate the plant and plant the cuttings back into the soil of the mother plant to give it a full look like Golden said earlier. This works well with plants like Monstera deliciosas. If you have a Monstera plant with multiple stems in the soil, you'll end up with a plant that looks massive. A question from Olaf. Which do you think is the best way to water plants? Bottom watering, watering in place, or sink shower watering? I personally feel shower watering is the best way for pest prevention and flushing the soil. For me, bottom watering is the one. I've got a video on this topic and I've seen great results in bottom watering my plants. It helps keep the top of the soil dry to stave off those annoying fungus gnats that we all plagued with. It's also much better for root development because the roots are encouraged to grow down and search for the water at the bottom 
and not to encircle the crown of the plant, which can be damaging. I've seen everything plants shower his plants in either his shower or in his garden, and it does look like a good way to clean and water the plant at the same time. If a plant is dirty, then I do give it a shower in my garden, which is a good way of keeping it clean and allowing it to photosynthesize properly. Daniela Oliveira asks, are there any good tricks to help the soil dry out when your house environment is not cooperating? I'm going away for 20 days. What do you do when you go on vacation? How do you take care of a plant planted in lecker instead of soil? I'm just using normal liquid fertilizer mixed with water, but I'm not sure if this is correct. Maybe a generic one, but how to make plants thrive when only a north facing window is available. Now, the only thing that will help the soil dry out is patience or changing the soil of the plant. If you've overwatered your plant, then it's best to take the plant out of the pot, remove the soil, check for any rotten roots and cut away, and then pot up into some fresh soil. Going away for three weeks can be a little bit tricky, but check out my video called Nine Genius Ideas for Your House Plants, where I show a nifty little drip irrigation system you can make yourself using a soda bottle and a cotton bud. I've not used Lekka myself, but adding diluted liquid fertilizer is a way to go. Plants will happily grow on a north facing window. They just won't grow as fast as if near a southwest or east facing window. If you do want fast plant growth and you can't move your plants, then maybe consider a grow light to supplement the light from the sun. I do have a link in the description of this video to some grow lights from Sansi, which you can get a 15% discount on if you use the code SHEFFIELD15 at checkout. Smile With Me asks a really great question. What if I want my plants to remain small, but they need to be repotted because of their roots? I don't have space for bigger and bigger pots. Is there a solution or do I just have to repot them? Root pruning is your answer here, my friend. Most people don't realize this, but the roots of your plant can be pruned, much like the foliage can. If you prune the roots, the plant won't die unless you cut off all the roots. So if your plant's roots are getting too big and you want to keep it in the same pot, then give the roots a trim and put it back into the pot with some fresh soil. Try not to cut away too much of the main thick roots and concentrate on the thinner secondary roots. Miss Elizabeth asks, what would you suggest I do if I am obsessed with buying house plants, aren't we all, but don't have spending money for house plants? It's a great question and luckily for me, Selly Paddy answered this perfectly with Propagate. Also, plant trading apps and growing non-GMO seeds from grocery store food scraps. Propagating plants and trading plants with your friends or in plant groups really allows you to grow the number of plants in your collection for free. Do check out my double your plant collection in one month for free video for more details on this. I've got lots of videos about propagating plants on the channel that you can check out after this. I've also got a couple of videos on growing a mango tree from seed and a lemon tree from seed. Kerry Jackson asks, I have a Maria Aglionema with mealybugs. I've tried several home sprays, but not working. The plant is isolated, but it still looks awful. Sorry to hear your struggles, Kerry, Plant pests are a real pain and can be so frustrating to win the battle against. So for those of you who have not had mealybugs on your plants before, you'll be able to tell if your plant has mealybugs because you'll notice some blotching on the leaves of your plant and what looks like tiny blobs of cotton on the stems and underside of the leaves. They're tricky to get rid of because the adults lay their eggs on the plants so the population easily multiplies it's hard to get rid of completely. It is a really good job that you've isolated the plant to stop the problem spreading to your other plants. If sprays aren't working, if you tried things like neem oil, then have you tried beneficial insects? These are natural predators to mealybugs and should help cure your problem. If you have a question about plants or anything else that you'd like me to answer in a future video, then leave it in the comments to this video and you might get featured in a future video. For more houseplant care tips, then check out this eight beginner houseplant mistakes you must avoid video.